what's up we're in the next part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings um it's important to gauge the first part in order that you might be able to figure out what's going on here uh otherwise you might find yourself getting a little bit lost but i was speaking about wickedness the wicked like just the barrage of attacks that i am constantly enduring and how it is that in my country south africa i like i hey guys the dream i'm gonna tell you the dream eventually but basically i'm speaking about being pursued on my way out of this country and it's not just on my way out of this country i believe it's just out of africa at all and this is something that I imagine is happening across all of Africa, where God has raised up a whole bunch of Christians in the, on this continent to raise an alarm, sound a siren, to let Africans know that if you guys don't repent from all of this self-abuse, all of the sabotage, largely black Africans, if you don't stop throwing away your family members in some toilets and flushing them, I am going to take a remnant of my servants and leave you destitute as a continent. I keep saying that Africans love to complain about how the West is wreaking havoc in Africa's life. And yet, when you look inside the regular African household, there is a sister bewitching a brother, there is a brother bewitching a child of a sister, there is a child of a sister bewitching her, her his or her grandmother there is somebody sacrifice like the amount of of carnage death the amount of death in black families across africa is unacceptable guys especially where there is poverty and largely they not these people are not dying because they're poor or they're hungry these people are dying freak deaths like freak deaths i will give you an example you know black magic hey guys when i was growing up in Lamini, my aunt's house uh, on the come up. My mom was gone to university and I had to live with my aunt for a brief season. There was this house opposite my aunt's house uh, where there were kids my age, our age. I could have been like what, maybe like seven, eight, nine. Yeah, at the time. And there were kids there that were like six, seven, eight, nine. A, a couple of them that lived there, guys. <sighs> All right in that family we used to play with those kids uh because you know they lived right opposite us like my cousins would be able to corroborate the story they lived right opposite us and all of a sudden like for maybe like the first two years of me being there things appeared to just go swimmingly and peachy and then next thing one particular year something like four children from that household consecutively passed away and it was just so shocking to me, I couldn't understand what in the world was going on. And now, when I think back, I realized that that was just a typical black household where somebody decided that they wanted prosperity wealth and that they were going to give the children of their, their sister, their nieces and nephews to the devil in order to prosper. That's what that was. The first kid, yo guys, the first kid was hit by a car, died. When that happened, that was all sad. We thought, I mean, life happens. It's unfortunate. All heartbroken people went to funerals we didn't go as the kids but my aunt went and whatnot within like two months we find out that a second child has passed away like there's like a whole scene there at the house with like coroners and everything collecting the body of a child and this kid passed away because the mom had opened bath water for this child and the water was too hot and this kid hopped in and because it was so hot, he panicked and like screamed and what have you. And in his panic and he's screaming and he's trying to get out, he drowned in that boiling water, in that hot bath water. Can't really say it was boiling because water does not come out boiling from the tap, but it was too hot for the boy. He ended up drowning from just panicking from being hot in the, in the bath water. He jumped in before the mother could put in cold water. And so body was collected by coroners. He just, he died. Yo, guys next thing there was another car like what is this uh hit like yeah another one that died from being hit by a car uh what is this the those kids right some of them lived off site like they lived with like a grandmother in, in another location and not in the main household so two kids of the main household passed away first the older brother and then the young brother and then there was a girl and a boy the who died but far from us our site and they, the, the one kid was hit by a car. And then a month later, the girl was also killed. I can't remember what, what killed the girl. And it was just so weird for me to have known four kids that all died within a space of like six months. They all died like six months from each other. Kids belonging to the same household. 
guys stuff like that doesn't just happen okay but in africa it's just so freaking common stuff like that doesn't just happen yes you get freak accidents where it is that an entire family gets killed in one car accident because they're coming back from holiday but when four different incidents take four different lives those are human sacrifice rituals those are yeah that family ended up moving out of that house because there was just too much sorrow like <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that happens in africa that was the first time that i got to basically see what i suspected to be black magic then i got older and started working in corporate south africa and what have you and the amount of witchcraft that i was slapped with by friends family members like guys if yes like it i like to say that thank god i got born again thank god i got saved at the age of 26 because my my blood was so cheap to especially one of my cousins it was just so cheap so cheap i would have died and gone to hell because of a human sacrifice ritual that was done by a cousin of mine but i had given my life to jesus i got saved on time and because of my redemption my prayers me alone in this entire family have protected so many other family members from being killed in human sacrifice rituals by family members they have failed because i've stood in the gap so basically from the age of my 26 years of age there is no telling how many of my family members would have passed away by now y young ones because of people greedily just trying to get their careers i don't know what the devil does to people when he inducts them in the occult to sear their consciences or make them feel like they can just take the death of a relative in their stride but there must be some ritual that is done that makes them cold and unfeeling towards that level of carnage but they easily just squander the lives of people just to get ahead ahead from what the lord has shown me so many of the people that have cast spells on my particular life have attended the funerals of people they killed and they know that they killed them they have gone to their funerals they know that that person got into a car accident after a demonic ritual that was done by them they know that that person suddenly got cancer because of a ritual that was done by them i recently had a, a cancer curse cast on me by a cousin of mine cancer curse so it can look like Njifela, you know yeah some carcin like some i drank some carcinogenic juice and then got like cancer or something just to neutralize me in a way that that's not so obvious yeah because i gotta go and this is a, a family member that has done this cousin same person because you know, guys as in like life is just so cheap it is so cheap it is so cheap in in, in africa kids die in their massive numbers they just get squandered like in my guys i mean like i want children i don't know what it's like to be pregnant i don't know what it's like to carry the term and raise a baby and buy it growers and buy it booties and buy it nestam and diapers and change it and this baby gets to the age of four and then some cousin of yours decides that it's gotta die somebody decides that a child that you took care of for four years just gotta go now and then they just easily sacrifice that kid and then they're the ones that are buying the casket they're the ones that are helping you along financially the ones who are hugging you the most the ones who are crying the hardest at the funeral but they know that they gave your four-year-old daughter or son to satan they they sacrificed your child your kid drowns your kid gets hit by a car at school your kid falls off a swing and dies you think it's an accident but it's a ritual that's been done by your brother your brother like stuff like that is happening teenagers i will give you yet another example and i know this one might be taboo but who cares because these things need to be called out nelson mandela when i was on the come up when i was growing up so many of his ne nieces and nephews that were my age were just dropping into caskets guys just like that they were just draw like it was oh he was mandela so then the stories made the news the stories made the news they were just dropping like that yeah and one of there was this one girl that was my friend on facebook that was part of the mandela family i i didn't know her personally it's what yeah she was a one of those accept a friend request from somebody and get like up to five thousand friends type thing yeah uzoleka mandela she's recently passed away from cancer yeah uh i became zolega mandela's friend on facebook some years ago and so i used to every so often scroll through her photos because some a mandela except i'm the one that sent the friend request a mandela accepted my friend request and i was feeling chuffed so i used to like check out her photos and everything on um on facebook and what have you and my heart was so shattered in 2010 I remember it was 2010 because i was always looking at her photos she was fascinating to me because i mean i had like she accepted my friend request she's a celebrity for crying out loud yeah i was shattered to 
in the notifications see condolences zenani mandela and for me it was like what how many of the children in this family have to keep dying she was 12 or 13 years old she was the daughter of zolega mandel and she died uh i remember it was 2010 the you know the concert the opening concert of the 2010 world cup that one she was coming back from that concert and the driver lost control of a vehicle or whatever and came out with just a few scratches but that kid died everybody involved in that accident came out with just a scratch and the kid died she was only 12 or 13 12 or 13 i could not for the life of me imagine what the mom was going through and i could not for the life of me imagine what anybody was going through her school like and she was so pretty like a, a child like just dies but that was not the first kid when i was in high school there were so many mandela kids dying drug overdoses car accidents like weird stuff yeah well i mean guys that's the kind of stuff that makes you see that mandela was not a good guy he gave this country i don't care what anybody can say he was given this country in exchange for some kind of a dark diabolical deal he was a freemason family members do not just pass away at such an astronomical rate just dropping and dropping and dropping just because oh there's so much and so much misfortune in this particular family nieces and nephews being put in caskets and with the mandela family it was always the children like the devil has a thing about the children it was always the kids like i told you these kids were dying when oh, i was a teenager and they were teens too like 17 year old 16 year old 14 year old hey batu this child child from the yeah that's what was happening and then yeah of course there were also like 22 year olds 20 yeah but like so many deaths and after nelson mandela passed away they stopped dying after mandela died all of these deaths in the mandela family that are weird like out of line and children as well it, it, all of a sudden as soon as Utataween passed away the kids all across his family stopped dying too i made that observation i made that observation since i was a kid I, I noticed that there was a lot of death and when i came to christ i concluded that it was because of whatever deal mandela made with the devil it was because of whatever deal he made with the devil that sacrificed all of those kids and once he passed away the devil was done drinking all that blood he was done taking all that blood so i mean that was from like a, a man that was a president of the country so what who are you exactly when you're just some chick from next door when you're just some dude from next door when you're just a man Lange, that works down the street at telcom yeah i mean it's gonna be so much easier for you to go unnoticed when four of your siblings kids die in a space of two years it's gonna go unnoticed. like that's just what's happening in africa there is carnage in families people are dying and they think it's just freak accidents children especially are getting taken they think it's just drownings they think it's just like car crashes a lot of the times you will find that the people who die it's anomalous it's weird because everybody else lived it's it, it wasn't like a carnage like a big like every like twenty thousand bodies on the highway no it's usually just one person that responds severely to an accident that everybody else came out of with just a minor scratch with some whiplash but they die that's a human sacrifice ritual like you can see it from a mile away and even some occult practitioners explain it that way they isolate individuals people to die in one car that gets in an accident and just one person dies while everybody else comes out strangely untouched strangely unharmed yeah guys proper stuff like that happens more frequently in the black community than any other single community out in these streets it's largely black people they are squandering the lives of children they're squandering the lives of teenagers they're squandering the lives of young adults people who have yet to give their lives to jesus christ are going to hell because somebody decided that they're going to make a fortune out of the blood of their cousin and i was nearly sacrificed by a cousin of mine but like i gave my life to christ i gave my life to christ on time just on time just on time just on time and i was able as well to spare the family from a whole bunch of grief by standing in the gap for them because we would have been burying people and would have been suddenly would have been weird guys it would have been like exactly what happened with that family was i mean one kid after the other after the other and just a space of six months four kids are dead the level of grief grief would have been astronomical because people just had to get their own it does not matter what memories you shared with garabo growing up it does not matter what memories you shared with pinky with manza with temba with with kolofelo with tolofelo with yeah it doesn't matter like it's just a proper doesn't matter you're you're happy to just squander their lives just exact drain that blood so that you can get a tender a joy like proper it's all it's about prosperity success i guess the bible does say that people in the last days are going to be lovers of money 
lovers of money lovers of self lovers of money so much so will you love money that you will not love your fellow man it's also written in matthew 24 that because of an increase in lawlessness the love of many will grow cold so you will love money and not people therefore people you grew up with that you ought to care for a lot more you will be happy to attend their funerals i would have had that that that, that woman would have attended my funeral she would have attended and probably been among the biggest mourners she would have been groveling snot and thunder with crocodile tears after sacrificing my life and she will not have been the first and only family member to try she however will have been the one that tried the most times and she's still trying to this day they easily just let their people go so i mean when when you're worthless when you're nothing when it's easy to kill you because you know i suga you gotta get i mean can you imagine actually what was going on with the case with, with, with um, the slaves in egypt it was probably very easy for them to pass away like when they got super sick pharaoh and them did not probably invest in too much medication because there's i mean more where they came from they keep on breeding anyway so whatever when when when, when people see you as a, a a a vessel or a tool to get ahead to succeed your life means nothing your life means nothing People are not only killing in order to get prosperity or success, but sometimes it's in the name of jealousy. Like in the case of Zahara, where she was killed by obviously somebody that fed her juju in her family or friendship set. It was suspected, even written, uh, even, even spoken of in the media, that there was something spiritual that killed U Zahara, the musician in the country. And it is speculated by her family members that the person who killed her killed her because she was getting married and she would not have it. That level of jealousy where it is that you would much rather a person die than get their own in life. So sometimes it's not even motivated by acquisition. Your own potential to acquire something. It is motivated by you not having to watch somebody do something that you don't want them to do. Like I said in the first part, the drug dealer that's out just selling you the drug called control. Control. Go and control everybody's life. And when then you can't control them, you decide that they're going to die. And that's what's happening with me now. I'm being pursued all the way to the Red Sea and I am a child of God. So, I mean, I'm going to cross, but others are going to get consumed. You're going to get consumed. I told you guys in the first part, like proper, you have seen that God has power. You have seen that the God of the Christians, there's something about that. There's something about him. There is a power that they have that excels above ours. And you do best to make like the Hebrew, the Egyptians and just give us your gold on our way out. You know, don't touch us. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with a lot more plagues. Seeing as you don't want to let go of your ancestral worship, even though there are evidences that it's not God. Why? Because it's so coercive. It is so incredibly coercive. It is not the one true power. And on top of that, despite it being coercive, it's so easily overcome by the name of Jesus. Something as forceful as a call of Ubungoma is easily overcome. If the person in question that doesn't want to respond to the call, if they call out to Jesus, they suddenly let go. Whereas everybody else dies, goes mad, all that jazz. There's so much evidence that there is more power in the name of Jesus than anything else. But you're stubborn, you're recalcitrant, you're obstinate. You're giving your turn over to the devil the moment they come out of the womb. You're sending them to Tisango, Martin, Heldin, Pepo, and all these missies. Funny little stuff. That's what's good. Yeah, you, you don't want to believe. You want to maintain your status as a Moabite. You want to maintain your status as an Egyptian. Fine. You can stay in Egypt, stay in Moab, but leave God's people alone if you want a long life. Otherwise, you will get consumed by the Red Sea. Otherwise, you will get killed and root, killing God's people. You cannot neutralize them. You will be like Haman. Hang at the very gallows that you set apart for Mordecai and the Jews. You are going to find yourselves getting ensnared by the trap you're laying for a Christian. If you want to live a long thriving life as an ancestral worshipping rando en route hell, at least have a peaceful life on earth by leaving Christians alone. But in Africa, yes, like it, but you are not satisfied when you keep on dropping like dominoes your aunts and your uncles. Now you are upset by the fact that your one aunt that's a Christian is just not droppable and so you keep on pursuing her all the way to the Red Sea. You won't go fetch your uncle at the Red Sea. You won't go fetch your cousin at the Red Sea. You won't go fetch your colleague at the Red Sea. You're going to go and fetch even your former colleague at the Red Sea. You're going to go and fetch your best friend at the Red Sea. You are going to go and fetch your mom at the Red Sea, your sister, because you, you go right inside your immediate families. You are going to go and fetch your, your, your sister's baby, your sister, the Christian, the baby, the newborn baby. You're going to go fetch that baby at the Red Sea. You're going to insist that you are going to sacrifice the child of this woman, seeing as you can't get to her. But you don't know that there is power as well in standing in the gap for your own family members. I've done it personally for my own family members who have survived the death spells of some pretty greedy family members who wanted to knock them out for their own prosperity. You're going to go and fetch some newborn babies, aunties, uncles, grannies at the Red Sea. You're going to go and fetch daddies and everything at the Red Sea. Okay, understand that if that level of rebellion in you, how recalcitrant you absolutely are, still dwells richly in your, in your veins coursing through them like blood, then with your blood shall you be then drowned 
at the Red Sea. Allow the Lord to neutralize you that you might early, prematurely, okay, prior to the date that you would have passed away, go then to the place where that you underestimated existed, the place where the smoke of your torment is going to rise forever, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in that place, where the, the fire does not consume, where the worm dieth not, where day and night you will have absolutely no rest. You will go there then early. You will go there at 35. You will go there at 26. You will go there at 40 instead of going there at 90. If you go on right ahead and live your Moabite measly life without afflicting Christians, without afflicting believers, if you live your Egyptian measly life, your Amalekite measly life, your Philistian measly life, without actually messing with a Christian, you might be given 90 years on earth. But right now you're just 26, you're 30, you're 35, you're 40, you're 45, you're 55. And you are insisting on following Christians out of Africa, Christians out of Brazil, wherever God is moving them because you are stubborn and God will not have them be wasted. Their lives will not be squandered because you are Zahara's best friend or whoever it is that was claimed to have killed her. You tell yourself, would you over my, indeed, die then. You tell yourself that over my dead body that I will, that Karaba will get married. Over my dead body that Zahara will get married. Yeah, Zahara was not a believer. So she got taken out by someone that was like, over my dead body. Yeah, Mara, let that person sing over my dead body at the Red Sea. Pursuing on horseback and everything. People on foot trying to leave slavery and watch that dead body of yours finally be exactly that, dead. You will die. Trying to kill the Christian version of Zahara. Do you understand what I'm saying? A person that's getting their life anyway. A person that's getting their future anyway. Despite the fact that ever since they were 12 years old, you've been busy with them. Ever since they were 17, you've been busy with them. Ever since they were 22, you've been busy with them. Ever since they've been 26, you've been busy. And now the woman is 36 and getting married and you are still busy. And because you can't control her, now she has to die. Now I'm sorry. Not when she's a believer. Not when she's a Christian. Not when she's a child of God. You are entitled to control her the drug eh? you are entitled to controlling a person's outcomes you want to de define their destiny where they're gonna go what they're gonna do if they're gonna eat spaghetti tonight or pizza you you want to determine when or if a person's gonna have churn and if they do have churn they must be out of wedlock and then you're also gonna determine when they're gonna contract hiv yeah that, that's what you do with your spells and then once they give birth to that child you also control how long that child is gonna live four years old and then they're gonna be sent over their blood is gonna be exsanguinated in a human sacrifice ritual and so the child is going to drown in a swimming pool and you're going to be a bereaved mother. When somebody's out there planning your future like that, including the fact that you're going to get to do that which a lot of parents dread the prospect of, burying their own children. When somebody plans that you are going to give birth to a child, take care of it, put diapers on it, feed it, take it to a pediatricians and uh, like pay exorbitant fees for expensive child psychologist and whatnot to train your child up taking this kid for ballet lessons paying a whole bunch of money to essentially put this child in the best like uh, like primary school just at the very beginning stage of their schooling and then a person that has invested all that much having even started from the time that the ba baby was inside the mother's womb some kind of a, an insurance annuity fund for university to invest in this child's university education when he or she turns 18 and matriculates so that they don't have to take out a personal loan and pay for fees because mom pay prepared so you're busy paying for an insurance policy from the time a baby is in your stomach and then at the age of seven somebody decides that your kid's gonna die somebody decides that that money that insurance money is just gonna go to nothing that investment is just gonna have to be liquidated redirected put in a trust fund see what we're gonna do with it all the toys that you bought that kid like proper the, the ones who take the churn for me like the the, the toys the, the room of a kid the the paraphernalia the crayons the little panties the little shoes just sitting there and there's nobody ever gonna put them on again nobody's ever gonna grow out of them ever again nobody because an uncle made a freaking decision to take that life in order to get ahead taking your children that's why i like to say to people get born again so you can cover your families even if they in and of themselves don't know God yet, you can still stand in the gap for them because there are crazy creeps out here in these streets. And I am being pursued by a whole bunch of them that are pursuing me outside of South Africa. They're trying to block me, grabbing me with jerseys and everything. Pulling me by my underwear and my bra and my hair. Trying to block me from entering into an airplane, from, from boarding a flight to leave the country. 
and they will be the ones to get consumed by a fire that does not consume. Where the worm dieth not, the smoke of their torment will rise forever. They will finally find out that hell is real. The hell they underestimated. The hell they chose ancestors. They, they chose ancestors in order to end up at. They chose these ancestors. They insisted that this, this here is a solution. There's no way. There's no way that this is not it. Because look at what I've prospered to do to Karaba's life. Even the level of evil that you have achieved against a person's life. You, for the life of you, cannot even see that as enough incentive to stop. Just the fact that it's just damn sorrowful that you can do this to a person's life. That, that's not enough to make you sad. That's not enough to make you realize you're a menace and a, a, a treachery in society. You don't stop because you're causing damage. You don't stop precisely because the eye of man is never satisfied and you want to be like God. You want to feel like you can manipulate people's lives. Put them like puppets on a string. You, you ask a woman out, she doesn't want you. Slap her with Corobella when she doesn't appropriately respond to the spell. You then squander her romantic prospects. I don't know how many guys have done that to me. First asked me out, I said no. Then went on with Corobella, it still didn't work, and then made a decision that nobody's gonna love me. Nobody's gonna marry me. Nobody's gonna adore me. I'm just going to be some rejected woman in these streets. The guy from America did that and a whole bunch of other men, including my ex-boyfriend. I mean, when you live your life doing stuff like that, why don't you think there is a hell? Why don't you think there is a hell? Why under heaven do you not think that there is a hell when you do that to people? Every time a person comes and tells you their plans, ooh, I'm going to university, ooh, I'm going to start a business, ooh, I'm going to do that, ooh, I'm going to take out a loan in order to, like, do this and that, ooh, 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 you then decide that, uh, oh, yes, like, I am sorry, like, no, you then make a decision that you're going to go to a sangoma and block whatever it is that that person said, ooh, in the, uh, prior to, ooh, I'm going to get a loan in order to start a business, ooh, you're going to get a loan, you're going to pay it off, but that business is going to fail, that's what's good. Because I'm going to go to a sangoma, like proper. Listening to every last one of your dreams as you're sharing them with a friend. Thinking that you can trust this woman. And then she goes and bewitches everything that comes out of your mouth. Blocking everything. Blocking people from falling in love. Blocking people from having children or having children right inside a marriage. M like, manip like people love their autonomy and you try to control them. Why do you not think you're going to hell? Why? Why do you not think that you can make a decision that your own child is not going to live, but cater to you and every last one of your needs for the rest of your life until you die, till she gets old, popping grays, menopausing, going absolutely nowhere because you don't want to be lonely. And so you block a perfectly thriving young woman from getting married and living a life that you lived. You got to have children. You got to get married. And then you don't want your own child to live. Why? When you do stuff like that, do you not think there is a hell? Why do you not imagine you're going there? Well, this is what's good. If that child is a Christian, if that person that is saying, ooh, I'm going to start a business. Ooh, I'm going to take out a loan to do this. Ooh, I'm going to go to university. Ooh, I'm going to... If that person is a Christian, if that ooh lady is a Christian and you are the random dastardly beast in the back end, blocking everything that the ooh comes before, comes after, sorry, you will die. You guys are literally pulling people with their panties, their belts, and their hair, and their shirts, ripping them apart from grabbing their destinies. And some of these people are a wrong turn, just like that horror movie. They are a wrong turn because they like the Hebrews in front of the Red Sea. Those ooh aspirations of theirs are from God. And the Lord will therefore fulfill whatever he will do through them, given that he gave them an ooh moment. And you who are trying to stop them, arrogant and pompous like Pharaoh, will be swallowed by the Red Sea. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's going to be you as you're passing away because you blocked an ooh dreamer from doing what they want to do. You're not going to block me from leaving South Africa. You're going to be blown off the highway as you're driving to the airport to stop me. That is what's going to happen. You are facing death. It is imminent. It is impending. And it doesn't matter how many of you there are. It is ideal that right now I'm using the analogy or the story with Moses and the people of God at the Red Sea. Because the barrage, what I saw last night, what, there, was, there were just so many. And when I woke up this morning, God said fumigator, the word fumigator, fumigation, fumigation. When I was living, not living, sorry, when I was moving into my apartment at Four Ways during the day, when the real estate agent was showing me the apartment, it was so pretty, so beautiful. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. Quickly signed leases and everything got approved. I was going to move in within the next couple of days. Got given the key within 24 hours because I'd already made the deposit and everything and the landlord had approved. And I made a decision to send some of my things over there overnight after work. I had seen the apartment during the day. And when I went in the evening, it could have been like maybe 7.30 now at night because I went straight from the office there. Guys, I switched on the light in my apartment and the 
number of cockroaches that scattered from the walls whether it was the kitchen or the open plan lounge i was i was ooh, oh oh goodness i was so grossed out i was so grossed out i was out of my mind grossed out i i stepped in after switching off on the light and i got out immediately carrying the things on me carrying the things on me do you understand what i'm saying that i was gonna bring into my apartment and i put them back in my car and i went back to my mother's house i called the real estate agent the next no nah, the same like evening on her cell phone i properly bothered her after hours i was like that place i don't care if i lose the deposit or whatever but i am canceling that lease if at all that the, the landlord does not get a fumigator because there are cockroaches crawling all over the show i went there to drop off some of my things today and they they just scattered when i switched on the light by the grace of god the landlord was a mature man he did not be like oh well, i'll keep that deposit or uh, i'll give you a refund he 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 fumigated the next day uh so no, no, well at my time because i already had the keys and everything had an appointment with with the fumigators i went i think during my lunch or whatever and i stood outside as these guys did their thing did their thing and they found all different kinds of weird stuff their eggs hatching and what well, it was just so disgusting these guys fumigated and after they fumigated i went back the next day i went to builders warehouse and four ways and i bought all different kinds of bombs like i bought sprays i bought like egg, i bought every i bought chalk i bought yeah all different kinds just to basically do a second fumigation myself because i could not live in that space i was super paranoid after the fumigators did what they did this, they were gone but i was like i'm gonna make sure they don't come back and i did that then only i moved in and i never experienced a cockroach ever ever since in that apartment ever since so basically the issue was eradicated even though it was a sectional title living close in proximity two people likely uh, that apartment was empty when i viewed it even though it was in the middle of the month so i imagine that the reason why there were so many cockroaches there was because of things like next door neighbors and downstairs and whatnot because it was empty and it was freshly painted it looked new it looked new i thoroughly imagine that complex was actually brand new the way that that apartment looked new so it was definitely not from the apartment however i was able to maintain a fumigated or an a, an apartment that had no cockroaches in it despite still living in a sectional title that had them obviously because they came from somewhere enough to crawl on the walls in an empty apartment that had no food nothing for them and they were crawling so it was probably there was a problem with my next door neighbors on both sides downstairs and i was able to eradicate the issue because like i said i was a fumigator on top of a fumigator they were the fumigators fumigated and i fumigated on top of that and i had contingency plans all over the show chalk everything all over yeah and i never experienced a roach issue not even once throughout my entire stay at that apartment what i'm trying to explain to you guys now is that christians are these people that keep on getting attacked like no man's business by little roaches by critters by things that crawl and creepy and they get disgusting and even though the environment is generally very clean it's empty just like my apartment in four ways it's freshly painted it look, made the whole complex look new nonetheless they are crawling on your walls even though your house is clean why because of next door neighbors because of people downstairs these cockroaches can crawl all over those next door neighbors and have a peaceful restful night sleep in those apartments because people are happy with merely just swatting a roach and not imagining that once you see one roach you've seen 10 you've seen 20 because there's never just one Do you know what i'm saying there are people who can live with them and just merely just swat them with their hand yeah well i grew up not being able to take stuff like that in my stride and so i was able to be essentially a unique person living in that sectional title that did not have roaches like i don't know i was with four ways and roaches i i was even at the william there was also a similar issue but it wasn't as bad and when i was living at the william uh the la i did I, I did not need to get a fumigator but i certainly did have to deal with some problems in the beginning of my stay because i could like the whole complex obviously had the problems the sectional title all of it obviously had the problem but i was able to eradicate that issue all of it despite being poor not even having much to myself because i am an expert fumigator frankly let's just put that out there i know how to uh, keep a pest issue never mind at bay but make it disappear I, I like if i had my own apartment you must understand you would never see an ant you would never see a fly a, a spider you would never see i i am that girl i am a pest controller because i can't deal i can't deal with pests i can't anyway 
now that I've put that story out there, let me tell you the dream that got me talking like this about what, this problem in Africa with this roach infestation. These cockroaches all over the show in Africa that are all over everybody's houses. And some people are content with just swatting them with their hand or spraying doom on one that you see when if you go in your kitchen in the middle of the night, proper switch on the light, you're going to see 20 on that wall. How in the world are you going to just swat one? When you see one, you fumigate, you bring, you call a fumigator. That's what you do. Africa has got people that have just taken in their stride. They have accepted that we live among these cockroaches. We live among these witches. They are next door neighbors. They are moms. They are dads. And some of them protect themselves with doom. You know what doom is? Doom is all these protection spells. Sage. Salt. Burning incense. Uh, cleansing rituals. Yeah. You do all these things. Uh, basically fighting fire with fire. Type of person to see two, three cockroaches when you switch on the kitchen light at night. And you just grab doom and think that like you're done with it. I'm sorry. Like you've seen three, you've seen 3,000. You've seen three, you've seen... Th yeah, you need a proper fumigator to get rid of the problem once and for all. Find the nest find the original source find where they find food find whatever you ever to turn your house upside down rip carpets from the wall and get this place clean otherwise some people ain't gonna sleep so for my family to make me live in these conditions is just bizarre and even in this little shack that i live in i have managed to maintain the the, the that i don't deal like the other day i had two frogs in here i didn't even know how they got in i don't even know how they got in I am like guys and the frogs are, are not like a pest that comes in because there's like I don't know it was raining or something and those you know those tiny little frogs that yeah and I was like eh, eh, nah. over my dead body relax blom and I doomed frogs like a proper I didn't even know how to get rid of them this, this space is up but I don't deal with cockroaches I, I don't deal with a, a, an excess of ants flies mosquitoes spiders guys in this environment because I'm that girl I'm that girl and so, I mean, really, as a Christian, how much more then do you think I am that, like, pest control caller, that woman that out you'll be calling you at 3 a.m. in the morning because there's no way I'm sleeping in this apartment. I told you, I called that land, not landlord, but the real estate agent at like 8.30 at night, 8 on some, I'm uh, harder if you're eating dinner. I'm sorry if you're preparing for bed, girl, but I either give me my deposit back or you can keep it, but I'm not living there. And she called the landlord and everything was eradicated. They humored my panic because it was worth a while to panic. It's the kind of stuff that you ought to raise it. Can't be waiting until the next day for what? Eh, eh. Right there, right now, we're going to talk about this problem. That's what's good. Yeah, Africa is teeming at the folds with households that are happy to just swat a cockroach. You, they are living on a... Like, Africans know that we are encircled by sorcery. They know. And a lot of them protect themselves with random weird stuff. Or they just accept that it is what it is. They mourn, they cry, they accept the death, like too much death in families. They just take it. They can tell that there's something wrong. But go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Yes, we go to Jesus. There are very powerful parts of Africa, don't get me wrong. But the larger majority are holding on to ancestors and all different kinds of weird stuff. They're mixing and they're not getting deliverance. They're not getting the power of God to rescue us from the futility of us. The future like proper. So I mean, when then so many people, when the... When, when Christians that are holding fast to Jesus for fumigation are so vastly outnumbered on that day we're called a remnant and this is what God does with the remnant he does not insist on rescuing a country for the sake of the remnant he takes the remnant out and then judges the country he takes the tenant out and then fumigates that's what you must understand so given that God has given Africans so many shots opportunities over all of these years to repent, repent, guys, repent, repent. Prophets being raised up all over Africa. Like evangelists, so many deliverance ministries. Goodness, Africa, like the African church is exhausted. There is so much sorcery that time has arrived where God now is like, my children cannot breathe where they were born. They cannot live in their own backyards. And those that are truly of me, that are not compromising, that are not letting me go, they are being beleaguered on all sides by a roach infestation an insect infestation a spider infestation an ant infestation just an infestation of something that should not be living especially teeming at the faults in voluminous numbers with people on that day it's uninhabitable you know how one rat when you see it in your house you can wham him wham it follow it pursue it like basically just scare it out of your house but when there are like 50 or a thousand rats all around in your environment they're a threat to you now. They are not scared of you now. When it doesn't matter how much you scream, they end up eating you alive until you are based like piranha. They become like piranha in the ocean where it is that uh, it's in a matter in a matter of seconds. You're nothing but bones now. 
because the fish have eaten your flesh. One rat, two rats, three, five. You can scare off as a human being. But when there's a thousand of them, they will not be scared of you. They will eat you. They will eat you alive and leave nothing but bones. Well, the Lord is not going to keep his Christian in an environment where there's just a thousand rodents in one room and expect us to just keep on whamming them with a broom. They will overpower us. That is when you are literally begging God to divinely intervene on behalf of these Christians. That's exactly what Pharaoh pursuing God's people to the Red Sea was doing. He was like a rodent infestation that was going to eat the people of God alive. A rodent infestation that a person cannot merely run away from or wham with a broom because there are just too many of them. In that instance, God himself swallows them up with the Red Sea. The miracles of God stopping the sun for Joshua and them. The miracles of God turning the tide, feeding Elijah at, at a brook by birds, ravens twice a day feeding a man. When, 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 when an entire country is afflicting one saint, the Lord is not going to insist on making that Christian Bruce Lee, King Kong on a mountaintop bashing the chest. God is not going to make that Christian a, a warrior in the midst of a rodent infestation. He will merely extract the Christian, put them in the wilderness like Elijah, and then fumigate Israel. Take out all those things that keep on knowing away at the toes of the believer. You are naive. I'm not going to have to take matters into my own hands. You guys will remember the video that I did where I was like, you know, guys, have you ever thought um, um it was a short that I did? And I was like, you know, sometimes I wish I could just take the wicked and put them in between my palms and sandwich them and just squeeze them. But then God told me, don't take matters into your own hands. It is for me to repay. In my dream, that whole thing that I did in my video where I was saying that sometimes I wish I could just squash the wicked myself. I ended up squashing a critter, some kind of a dastardly, like, creepy crawly in my palms. Essentially, that was the mockery of the devil saying, I am going to afflict you until you take matters into your own hands. Except the battle is the Lord's. When we're beleaguered on all sides and there's no way to look and Pharaoh, who has got more military might than we do, and is, is pursuing us to the Red Sea, all we need to do is just cross the Red Sea and trust that God is going to swallow them with the ocean. Is that basic? We don't need to fight when there are so many of you coming at us. So occult practitioners, I'm warning you. You are trying to block me from leaving Africa because you think you can control the living daylights out of me because you bought that drug called Controller. Um, you're going to get consumed by the Red Sea because I will admit I cannot fight what under heaven I saw in my dream. I had a dream of a, an infestation and it made me run away. Like I was fleeing from my mother's house to my uncle's house in Tladi Soweto. I was running basically from house to house in my family. House to house, like the homes where my family members stay. I was running away from, like, it, guys, it was, a, it, it was a combination of different kinds of critters, of different kinds of bugs. And some of them looked militant, like scorpions, like they were alive, wearing actual suits. One of them, I whammed with like a broom and it died. However, upon it dying, it then multiplied into thousands of spiders, little spiders. And I have a thing about spiders. I'm in, I'm, I've got arachnophobia. And guys, there we are, guys. I was running, but from my, I ran away from the cockroaches, the scorpions, the spiders. Guys, it was a combination of many insects. And I was just running every, I, 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 my mom's house. I was able to. And at some point, one scorpion that was wearing a suit, like a whole outfit. Remember, I whammed one of them and it became like many spiders on the floor. This was my dream. It became many spiders on the floor. That was God showing me the barrage of attack coming from multiple people in the occult. Some of them belonging to covens and they're coming at you. We won. The end result in that dream was me basically settling for some man who was shrouded in darkness wearing a black suit with a like, you know, um, you know, the Debonair's tie, Debonair's tie, Debonair's tie. You know, the de ish. I'm South African and... Devonness, I believe, is a South African pizza brand. I need to explain a bow tie. Thank you. Yeah, some shrouded, dark, evil man wearing a baggy suit, but with a bow tie was now basically proud of the fact that that barrage of attack on me made me run to him and finally accept that marriage proposal. That was basically a dream telling me we are going to come at you in our voluminous numbers. Gara until you finally marry one of us in my dream after like i was running away from these things i was scared of them i squashed a scorpion in between my hands 
after squashing what that like what that analogy that I made in my dream, so taking matters into my own hands, after squashing this one scorpion, three of them disappeared because they were scared that I was gonna squash them in my hand. I whammed one with a broom and it became thousands of tiny little spiders. And eventually this environment was just so freaky to me with all these insects crawling up the walls and they were everywhere just encircling me that I ended up fleeing, running to the arms of a dark shrouded occult man wearing a debonair's tie. And I have seen that whole top hat wearing debonair's like bow tie look so much in my dreams representing evil men. I don't know what it is about that particular look. In my dream, however, this particular grubby, nasty monster that I ended up settling for was not wearing a top hat, but a lot of times they're wearing top hats. But the, the baggy black suit with the bow tie, that, that's always just in my dreams. And I think that is a, a, particular, a particularly poignant symbol for the occult. I think it's just what they... You know how magicians like to wear top hats? Yeah, that, like magicians, like if you think about magicians into actual tricks for a show, they they had they like that outfit like a black suit with a bow tie and a top hat it's just what magicians like to wear for whatever reason so i i keep seeing that kind of outfit and i think it's very significant and poignant to, to explain a particular uh, hierarchy or archetype that is very dearly beloved and held to by the occult it is symbolic of a type of rank i think that that top hat because i've seen it guys so very many times in my dreams like over the years just these dastardly men that are trying to marry us by force christian women they tend to be wearing this outfit they tell you anyway whatever yeah in my dream i was actually wearing some stuff oh goodness it was oh it was so disgusting but when i woke up guess what i did i not only rolled my eyes but the holy spirit god said to me fumigator fumigator essentially the lord was telling me they think that they can increase their numbers and you will freak out but honey i am the fumigator guys <laughs> it is written in god's word that the lord does not delight in the strength of the horse the man with might but the one who fears him these people have got strength in numbers and in my dream yeah, the, the attacks were coming from so many angles like i said it's covens it's cults a lot of them and it's individual people and they're telling themselves that they're gonna block me basically follow me all the way into the flight's fuselage except they're going to get sucked out like in the movie final destination flight 181 and i'll be the only one surviving they are dying occult practitioners across africa you are passing away if you are going to go and pursue those prophets those priests those evangelists those people of god that have been trying and trying and trying and now it's just too hard you ha you have you're making yourselves sodom africa do you know what i'm saying with all of your insistence on witchcraft, your insistence of on ancestral worship, this God that's not really God. You've seen power in Christianity. You've seen it. And God is exhausted with the exhaustion of his Christians. And he will snuff out the lights where it is that they're at by taking them out of the room and leaving you in your reprobate state. He is going to put his Christians through the Red Sea and then swallow you whole because this year is not sustainable. We can't live. We can't breathe. We can't be the only ones standing in the gap for our families. We can't be the only ones standing in the gap for our countries. For crying out loud. Like you are killing Africa with your ancestral worship. You are destroying the entire continent. And if at all you're going to insist on making your country Sodom, then God is going to take Lot. And when then all of these very hardworking Christians in Africa leave, they ask like it, y'all, what do you have? Who, who, all you have are your sangomas grunting over some mpepo, misi, bones. All you have are the funny little things that you keep on whipping yourselves with at the back all you have are your incense smelly little funny things all you have are your herbs these things that you use to cleanse your bodies claiming that you're getting clean all you have is the devil and trust me all that guy can do is steal kill and destroy he can do nothing but so he will impoverish your africa further he will impover he will worsen your status quo he will shrink your economies even more he will continue to send you prophets like bushiri and hubert angel he will continue to raise them up among you because you love them. The ones that are out there with these counterfeit signs and wonders and miracles. He will keep on sending you Trancidi or Transidi or whatever you say his name. He will give you your TB Joshua's and they will continue to be prolific, ruminating, roaring across Africa. False. Not of God. While true saints are out here getting on some airplanes leaving Africa because they're tired. You would much rather believe Bushiri despite God having exposed them so many times. Calling him Papa when God made a clear Christ. That there's no one other than Abba above. But just like the Catholic Church, you keep on calling mere mortals father. That is what is going on here in Africa. 
That's what's going on. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And in your attempt to follow Christians out, you will die. In your attempts to make sure that you keep us incarcerated, you will pass away. The Lord said to me that this here is a fumigation endeavor. I must not worry. I must not freak out. I must not front. I must not shake in my bones and in my pantyhose. Really, I'm cool. I will be fine. I will live to tell this uncomfortable story because I don't need to take matters into my own hands and squash a cockroach underneath in my own hands. Not a co- it was a it was a it was a company it was a scorpion that was wearing a suit for crying out loud in my dream. All of these insistences on making me settle because over your dead body before I will get a life indeed you will die. You will literally die and nobody will miss you I promise you. Given that you will have sacrificed four, five, six, seven year olds, 12 year olds, children of your aunties and uncles, you will have taken them to eternity when they still had like a whole thriving future to go and inherit. Amban, continue to pursue God's children all the way to the Red Sea and see what happens. The Lord told me fumigator, fumigator. In other words, he was telling me, don't worry about an infestation at that height. Don't worry about a barrage of attacks from numerous occult practitioners coming at you, targeting you, targeting you from cults, covens, some of whom are high priests and high priestesses telling themselves that they're powerful. They, they are head of Angola, Ugh. head of Africa. Ugh. Just, they're so disgusting, so disgusting. Telling themselves that Bona, they have been initiated into higher levels of the occult. And so they're going to keep on coming at you because they think this is Harry Potter. Where they are Voldemort and you're Harry Potter. They think that Christianity is a, a loggerheaded battle with the kingdom of darkness. And so it's going to be real hard to win. Just like Harry Potter struggled to win against Voldemort. Yeah. They think this is the Philosopher's Stone or the, 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 the Prince of whatever. Mm. They will keep on thinking that this is Harry Potter and, and whatever it is that Harry Potter does. Okay. Until it becomes clear that this here is not a loggerheaded war that we are making with the kingdom of darkness. God is God. And as Christians were seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus, you either repent or you perish. Do you understand? You will get in a bus crash just like the one that happened on Easter. You will either repent or perish. But unroot, perishing, you will think that you are onto something with a Christian. You are the ones that made a decision to squander your lives. You destroyed your lives. By deciding that you are going to control people in your lives. You are the ones that passed up on good women because you were made too blind to see them for what they are. Because somebody introduced you into witchcraft. You had a perfectly good girl and you started to hold her hostage with witchcraft. That's why you lost me, ex-boyfriend. You had everything you needed. Everything. But you wanted to go and buy the drug control. And so now God is about to fumigate you if you don't repent. If you don't want to walk away from your ancestral worship, you don't have to. God doesn't coerce anybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil is the one that does coerce. He's the one that calls you up with, with u, 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 twala, no, twasa. That's what's good. God is not going to force you to worship him, but he might give you a long life of futility. Continue to live your futile life if you just leave Christians alone. He might give you 80 years, 90, 75. You might actually live to turn 50, okay? Seeing as today you're 42. Dude in America. 44 now. Yeah. Dude in America. You might actually live to turn 50. That's what's good. If you just leave Christians, you can, hold, you can literally carry on with your voodoo. Carry on with your spell casting everyone in America in these streets that you can find. Keep on bewitching them. But just make sure they're not Christian. You might actually live to see 50. But if you don't repent, you won't live to see 45. It's what I'm trying to explain to you. Blocking Christians. Thinking that you are going to hold them hostage. Following them all the way to the Red Sea. You are cutting your own lives short. Let this be a, a final warning for your final destination just like the movie. Because if you get on that flight, it will burn. And you will be in it. And unroot. Trying to finish a Christian off, you will be the one to finally endure a hell you underestimated. If you want to go to hell, go. But I would greatly recommend you delay your journey there by leaving Christians alone. The Lord is my fumigator. I don't have to squash you myself. I can make war and trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. But once all the power of all the witches in Africa is all up in my grill, God is not going to expect me to fight that, you idiots. He's not going to expect me to go to war. Just by myself as a Christian against 10 cults, 10 covens. <laughs> He's not going to expect me to fight 10 little warriors of Satan. He is just very simply going to extract me out of a room. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then burn all of you to the ground. All that it took for me to live in a clean apartment, Kwako Four Ways, was for me to tell my landlord, I'm sorry, I'm not going to live there. And the landlord was responsible enough to fumigate on my behalf. And then I, afterwards, once the situation was eradicated, I made sure that stuff doesn't come back in again. That's all I have a responsibility to do. I have a responsibility to maintain a fumigated apartment. 
but I don't have a responsibility to fumigate it myself. I called my landlord. I called the real estate agent who then called the landlord. The landlord in this particular analogy would be God. Do you understand? I call God. God fumigates and then all I got to do is make sure that I'm working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. Striving to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Making sure that cockroaches don't come into my apartment. Making sure that I don't get unequally yoked. Making sure that I don't accommodate wicked company. Making sure that I don't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers like it is written in Psalm 1. I just got to make sure that I keep my hands clean as a Christian. But the Lord is not expecting me to fumigate my own apartment. He will do that. Just like my landlord did back in the day. I just got to make sure that afterwards I go to Builder's Warehouse by some chalk, by some spray, some doom, some to make sure they never come back in again. All I got to do is protect myself from silly little infiltrators that will keep on trying to come at me in the future. But a whole barrage from Africa dream on. The Lord is not expecting me to deal with all of y'all in one sitting. He is just not. I don't have to run from house to house. They pursued me from my mom's house to my uncle's to my aunt's. And I was just running scared in these streets. Yeah, in my dream, of course, I'm scared. But in waking life, as soon as I woke up, God said, fumigator. Essentially, Satan out here communicating to me his strategy from his kingdom what he's gonna do and god said don't worry you're not gonna move into a filthy apartment full of rodents you're not gonna move into a filthy apartment full of roaches you're not gonna move into an apartment that's got 10 spiders in a corner honey i'm gonna get rid of all of them all you gotta do is make sure they don't come in once you're living in a clean apartment that's all i gotta do so i'm not scared of you which is why because god is my warrior it is my fighter the battle belongs to the lord it is not mine he's the one that splits the red sea first and foremost he's the one that's going to put me on an airplane leaving south africa and then he's also going to be the one to swallow you with that airplane when you insist on going on it to make sure i don't make it to wherever i'm going to live i'm leaving this country it's going to happen whether or not you are actively trying to block it but understand if you try to block me and if you pursue me all the way to Oartambo, you will die don't say I didn't warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Peace.